better run, man. Life's a pain, but you got me. Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you. Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to sink our teeth into a recently released comic book, Cult of Carnage, Misery Number 1, which is, I thought, going to be a one-shot. Turns out it's a miniseries, so what do I know, right? Uh, this book is written by Sabir Pazada, and also the art is by Francisco Mortarino, who uh, hopefully I'm not butchering any of those names, because I think both do an amazing job on this book. This was one of those books, and I think someone commented this just the other day, that I was like, more symbiote stuff, really? Liz Allen, really? She's going to be a symbiote now? I mean, wasn't, you know, we already had her father-in-law, you know, Norman be Red Carnage, and he's the goblin. And then, you know, Harry was a goblin. And then you had her son, who's the new Red Goblin um, and Carnage symbiote thing. So it's like, oh, man, th th can this family be left alone? I liked what Mike Costa did with her and Dr. Steve and brought them in and was like, all right, you know, we're going to have Alchemex characters. She's going to run Alchemex. Um, and that's going to lead into, you know, one day it becoming, it's like a startup company now with some funding, but it's eventually going to be, you know, become the conglomerate that we know that takes over New York in Nuevo York in the year 2099. So this is really cool. All that groundwork was amazing. And I always wanted those characters to come back. You guys heard me on this channel numerous times say, man, I want Dr. Steven to come back and I would love, you know, for Liz to come back. So please bring them back, Marvel. Please someone do something with them. And we've seen them sprinkled here and there in some books, but this book is, is full on dedicated to that. This feels like an extension of the Costa run in some way, which I really like because in that Costa run, obviously we got the, you know, a flash as the new anti-venom and that was something created by Alchemex. And that's what we have here. You know, Alchemex has kind of been given after the, uh, you know, extreme carnage story and after King and Black, they're kind of the leading experts trying to get a handle on symbiotes. And meanwhile, the Life Foundation is kind of coming in and applying pressure to Liz Allen and saying, hey, we've been kind of refunded and now we're back in the spotlight, you know, and, and Carlton Drake is miraculously alive again, thanks to Meridius. So he's in the book too. So it's still tying into everything that's going on, but it is keeping it, at least right now, at a street level. Um, but still kind of playing into this, uh, you know, politics of uh, business owning and, and, and running a corporation and stuff. So I, I did like this. I thought this was really, really well done. This was, like I said, a book that I was like, oh, another symbio book, like someone said in the comments. But then after I read it, I'm like, okay, foot and mouth. This actually was pretty decent. You know, of course, I did kind of a, a little bit roll my eyes like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. So, but they, they do a good job of waiting till the end of this book, and we are going to get into spoilers. So I just want to let you all know that spoilers are inbound. And if before we get into spoilers, boom, I'll give out the digital code right there. First person to put that code in, you are going to get a copy of Cult of Carnage Misery. It only works once, so hurry up, put that code in, go to that website and do that and get the comic and let me know what you think. Let me know if you got the comic, you know, comment that down below. And if you did and you want to review it, let me know your review down below as well. And even if you just read this book and you want to give me your thoughts, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below also. Um, so in this though, what they do, they do a really great job of setting this up. Like what I didn't like about Spider-Man 2099, uh, the current one that just came out with Introduced Carnage 2099, I'm, I'm going to wait, I think, until all five issues of that come out because I think it's coming out every week. So I'm going to wait till that's done before I review it because, man, I really did not like issue one. Uh, and the reason for that is because I think Steve Orlando, one of my critiques of him in that story is that he doesn't set the groundwork very well of this carnage thing. He just kind of rushes into it like, you know, uh, and I didn't like that. I was like, ah, dude, like, take your time. Let things simmer. And so I know that's a risk sometimes, but man, Sabir did that in this book. And it's a risk, in my opinion, that paid off because it was good storytelling. There are a lot of people out there that don't actually know the history of Liz Allen, who maybe came into the book scene in the last 10 years or so. And they don't know that she goes all the way back to the origins of Peter Parker in the early issues of Spider-Man and, and all that stuff. So to do a whole issue where they're dedicating to her remembering Harry from both her life before he died the first time and in recent years when he was actually like a clone of some kind that was created by Kindred um, or, or, you know, some kind of creature clone thing that was uh, in her life and she was in love with and she's like, oh, I got my husband back. And, and then turns out he wasn't real or, you know, kind of you know cloned out and died or whatever. Um, that was all happening in the Nick Spencer run. So she has now experienced that loss kind of two times with Harry, um, although her memories of it are jumbled because she, because of, you know, the, the deal Peter made with Mephisto, she only remembers the recent time that Harry died. She doesn't remember the first time he does, but there's still like some grief that his recent loss is activating that maybe 
something's familiar. Yeah, maybe I felt this way before and I just don't remember. So they're kind of laying all this groundwork with her and she's going through her life, remembering things she did with, you know, Harry when they were younger, when they first started dating. And then in recent years, when, you know, before he uh, passed away again and then the expense around her before he was killed and died saving his father's life. So, um, yeah, and there was just really great conversations. And, you know, uh, Harry even says, like, we're two privileged kids, you know, and he points out, like, the obvious with them. And he's like, you know, you, this is what you want in a man, and this is what I want in a woman, and that's why we're perfect together. And I kind of like that, because that feels very, like, um, you know, Harry was reluctant to be, you know, uh, confident sometimes, you know, he or he staged confidence. But this kind of showed when he was around Liz, at least through the eyes and, uh, and pen of Sabir, that he had moments where he was confident around her because he was like, I know she likes me and I definitely like her. And, uh, and he's, so there's no games here. You know, I don't want to play games with her. And I kind of like that. I thought that was really cool. But what she does is she ends up finding one of his secret labs, you know, where there's goblin gear and, you know, in their house and stuff, another, another, you know, secret lab that she found. And she's like, Oh my God. And Normie is mad because she brings in, you know, uh, the, you know, whatever spear hunter or whatever the spearhead and the guardsman, because that's, you know, they all work for Alchemex and are, are hired by them. So she brings him in to clear all the goblin stuff out and go destroy it. And Normie doesn't like that. He's like, these are things from my father. He kept these here so we could protect each other. So no one would dare come and attack us. And Liz is like, look, I'll, we'll, I'll protect you. We have guards. We have spearhead. We have your grandfather out there. He's like, we have things. We don't need this stuff. I don't want you and your brother to grow up in a house with these kind of weapons. Like, you know, it's bad enough you're growing up in a house where we could be attacked at any moment by people who want revenge and stuff. But I don't want you to have access to this stuff, you know, because there's a moment here where his little brother actually holds one of the pumpkin bombs and it's so tense. I don't want to show all the pages, but there's it's a tense, like good, you know, <laughs> while where he's holding it. And he's like, they're like, give it, give it. And he's like, well, if I give it to you, is it going to be like last time when I told I, wa I wanted the candy and you took it from me and never gave it back? And, you know, Liz is like, no, 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 I'll give you it. I'll give it back. Just let me hold it for a second. And you just see them trying to rationalize with this child who's holding a bomb in their hands. So after that, you know, after that very tense moment, we have Dr. Steven, you know, and he's in the lab and he's talking with Liz and they're going over this slither of the carnage symbiote that they have um, that they got during the extreme carnage event and after, you know, the King and Black stuff. And all the stuff they're studying. And he's like, well, I did take one sliver of that Carnage symbiote and I did bond it to something. And so, boom, you can actually see a Carnage symbiote that is attached to uh, a monkey. And it has killed the other monkeys in the cage with it and has the spiral on its head. So Eddie's mullet recently when we did our Carnage episode, he brought up the fact that his theory is... We're going to get all these versions of Carnage. We're going to get like a mindless killer Carnage, a Carnage that wants to be a god, a, a, sl a slither of it that thinks it's Cletus Cassidy. We're going to get one that actually is Cletus Cassidy in some regard. We got the extreme beot that's attached to him. We got Deadpool with extra arms. Like there's a lot of different Carnage things happening right now. And that's clearly going to build towards something. Uh, you know, whatever Al Ewing is building towards with time travel and Meridius and all these things, Cletus, Cassidy, and Carnage are definitely the wild card that are going to somehow factor into that and be the, you know, the thing you can't predict. You know, the thing that might mess up all the plans or that maybe even Eddie is like, hey, God symbiote Carnage thing or maybe Cletus, we need to team up to actually, you know, uh, defeat what's going on here. And and will Cletus choose that or not? You know, well, again, he's the wild card. So I think Eddie's on to something with all of his theories and I interjected some of mine there. So I'm curious to see where all this is going, but they do put in a sliver of the anti-venom symbiote with it and watch it wrestle each other and, and take control and then become something new. And meanwhile, you see the other Life Foundation symbiotes, including Toxin. So the weird thing is, is Toxin was still on that little kid after Extreme Carnage that we saw during King and Black and some of the other stuff. We saw still attached to that little boy who his dad's a guardsman. So I'm guessing that story is over because now Toxin is in this. And then I also... I uh, think I read that Toxin will be appearing in an upcoming issue of Venom, not by Al Ewing. I think Al Ewing's dipping out for two issues and then some other writer is going to come in and tell a Toxin story where he's going to do like a new take on Toxin. So I guess that whole story with the kid is done. And I guess this being here is going to be broken out at some point. Um, so I don't know. So we got Phage, Scream, you know, we got Lasher, uh, Toxin. So all the Life Foundation symbiotes and Toxin 
have all been captured according to this issue. Um, so I don't know how it you know got removed from that kid. Maybe his the guardsman dad found out it was on the kid. If that happened in a book that I missed, and you guys want to let me know, please do. Because there's so much symbiote stuff going on right now, I do not put it past me that I actually missed out on something <laughs> uh, and, and missed an issue. Um, so anyway, we have this uh, you know new mercenary, Mr. Jones guy. Turns out he's you know part of the guardsmen. He knows their you know systems. He knows how to get by their security and all that stuff. And he's willing to go in and uh, and take down these symbiotes. He's being hired to do so. And like I said, while he's planning and doing that, you have Alchemex uh, trying to be bought by Life Foundation, who all of a sudden got enough funding now that Carlton Drake's back to bounce back into the corporate world, and even to the point where they're making enough money or ahead of Alchemex, who's been around for a few years, but has had some hiccups in their you know development. So um, so yeah, so now we have this whole thing with Liz Allen and kind of creating a nemesis for her in Carlton Drake, which I think is awesome. I think they do a really good job. And even though they have boring coffee shop uh, conversation scenes like this one, um, I still think it's, it's neat and the character they bring in and what his purpose is and what he kind of sets up and the, the, the kind of the revelation he gives to Liz, who really did know the truth. I think she just needed someone else to hear it, um, that this sliver is way too dangerous. So she has a little sliver on her from that anti-venom carnage symbiote that they made, the hybrid with the monkey, and she has a sliver of it, and she's trying to get this guy to maybe help out. And he's like, look, symbiote stuff's banned, so they're still kind of referencing after Extreme Carnage that symbiotes are you know, not good. They're not supposed to be around. They're, they should be hunted down. And so... He's like, yeah, you know, I'll pretend like you didn't show this to me because we're old friends, but, you know, take it back, take it back to your lab. I don't really want to have anything to do with it because I'm afraid of, you know, nothing ever good comes from these things, uh, which he's right. So he's a very smart guy to stay out of it. Um, but I wonder if he'll come back later on anyway. I wonder if Liz is going to need his help uh, considering what happens to her. So, yeah, so I don't want to go down and go through the beats of every page in the story, but we're getting near the end. We have that Mr. Jones guy suited up with his armor with the X on it and stuff going in to try to take down uh, the symbiotes, you know, at Alchemex. And then you have Liz there, who's obviously with her guardsmen are trying to protect it. They don't want that stuff to fall in the wrong hands. And then something, you know, very predictable happens where a symbiote gets out, uh, obviously. Um, and so, uh, but it, how it does and, you know, and where it comes from, I don't want to spoil. I'll say, go read the book yourself and we'll talk about it when we review issue two. I'll kind of do a little uh, recap and talk about the ending of this issue. I don't want to give everything away because I know sometimes I do that and I don't like to do that with new books. I, that was some feedback I got recently, uh, you know, about, I think like last year. And I was like, you know what? That's a good point. If it's a new book, I shouldn't go full on with it. You know, sometimes I might if it's like two weeks or late or something, you know, if I'm a little late with it. But with something that's brand new, like I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to save some things for you guys because I want to encourage you to go support good books. And I think Misery actually surprised me. It is a good book. And I think Sabir and the team that worked on this, the artwork's great. You know, the writing's good. And I'm curious to see where they take Miss Liz Allen, who is a character I never would have thought would have gotten to this point in comics where she's, you know, married to Norman Osborn, has kids, runs a corporation like Alchemex, and now is a symbiote host, you know, host to a symbiote. A uh, really wild road for that character, but really cool keeping her around because, like I said, she goes all the way back to the early days of Spider-Man comics. So I'm glad she's still around and still doing awesome stuff. So let me know what you think of Misery down below. And like I said, the ending, we can talk about it in the comments if you'd like, but I'll do a recap when we review issue two whenever that comes out. And, uh, and we'll do a recap so I can actually get on record here my thoughts of the ending of the book. But obviously you know where it's going. There's an attack on Alchemex. A symbiote gets out. The book's called Misery. You saw her on the cover. You can probably guess for the most part, but the beats of it, some of it are, are pretty interesting, and we'll get into that in the next episode when we discuss Misery number two. So thank you so much. I have more stuff coming up for you guys soon. I'm going to have a Red Goblin number three discussion video, and then I'm going to have a discussion video for Carnage 11 and 12, and then after that, um, we will get into the Carnage Rain stuff because that is going to start pumping out every week now, along with Venomverse stuff and, you know, 2099. There's so much going on right now, and i got to try to keep up. So this is all I'm going to record tonight. I'll share with these, uh, you know, these videos with you very soon, and hopefully you guys enjoyed them. And then by the time these go up, hopefully I've recorded the next batch, and we'll try to keep going and, and stay ahead or stay at least in pace with all this cool stuff that's coming out. So thank you so much for watching the show. As always, let your comments be known down below, and as always, we'll keep talking down there. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.